This week, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, told a reporter from the French national television that he acknowledged the good of nuclear energy. I wanted to transcribe the original video, but unfortunately there is an audio issue with the original file, so we must make do with some footage without the sound. Let's consider this animation made by the Tomorrow YouTube channel and shared by Energy for Humanity. We see a map of Europe and a part of the Atlantic Ocean. The color coding is thus, green is a low carbon dioxide intensity for electricity and black is a very high carbon intensity. Macron explained in his interview that Germany chose to close their nuclear reactors and try to increase their renewable energy production significantly, but that they couldn't offset the loss of their nuclear energy capacity with wind and solar and therefore Germany has again invested in coal and gas and I would like to add biomass. He also said that this has had a negative impact on their emissions and that France wouldn't follow in their footsteps. If this is true and his resolve doesn't falter and France acknowledges how effective nuclear power is at keeping emissions low, they will set a very important precedent. But what we need now is for them to follow through and their success will not be measurable in a matter of years. It will take decades and new reactor installations because keeping open the old ones alone isn't enough. And it seems that the French government isn't ready to let go of the idea that they need to increase their share of renewable energy. So much is also clear from Macron's interview, where he talks about solar, wind and biogas as being viable options for France. So back to the issue at hand. Nuclear is good for the emissions profile of electricity. When we consider the animation, we can see why. Germany has a far higher carbon footprint in terms of energy generation than France has. And this is because France has a very robust energy network consisting mainly of nuclear reactors, whereas Germany had a good number of reactors but has substituted them for coal, gas and biomass, which are all significant carbon dioxide emitters. Let's shed some extra light on the matter. We are going to compare Germany and France for December 20th, 2017. France's carbon intensity is 98 grams of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour, whereas Germany has a carbon intensity of 518 grams of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. The reasons should be obvious. Today Germany is overcast and there is little wind. So, Germany depends on a large volume of coal, gas and biomass to, to provide energy today, whereas France's energy mix is dominated by nuclear energy and hydro. It should not come as a surprise that the other green colored countries on this map are also powered by nuclear energy and in part by hydro. These two technologies are the most effective when reducing carbon emissions is concerned. And we should keep teaching this lesson ad nauseum if we have to. Let's consider this from a different angle. It is said that the subsidies for the German energy transition amount up to 220 billion US dollars from 2000 until now, which gives us about 12 billion US dollars of subsidies per year. Let's break this down in terms of performance. What have the Germans achieved? This data comes from the German Energy Charts website and the German website for energy balances. In total, the Germans built 85 gigawatts of renewable energy since 2002. That's wind, solar, biomass and a little hydro. These amount to 138 terawatt hours a year and may be expected to last for about 25 years if we are lucky. In these 25 years, in total, 3,450 terawatt hours could be generated. If we break this down, it would have cost the Germans 2.6 billion US dollars per gigawatt or 64 million US dollars per terawatt hour. What I've shown you now is not the total cost, it's merely the influence of subsidies. 
So if ever someone tells you something is cheap or expensive, consider it a made-up story. We can make things however cheap or expensive as we want. But that hasn't yet dawned on everyone. And so people keep running around in circles, glorifying technologies and making assumptions based on altered realities. Let's assume a different scheme. Suppose the Germans acknowledged the importance of nuclear back in 2000, and they decided to start building nuclear rather than renewables exclusively. And I enunciate this clearly, nuclear and renewables. And since we are talking subsidies, we'd be able to make anything as cheap as we want. Let's play it fair. Here we have the 2010 projected costs of electricity by the OECD. Granted, in the past seven years things have changed, but the costs will have remained fairly the same if we discount the EPR and the AP1000. I am going to choose two possible reactors for the job, the European pressurized reactor and the Korean APR1400. I assume that both types would operate for 60 years at a capacity of 90%, and that in the end, 30 gigawatts of capacity could generate as much as 13,663 terawatt hours in 30 years. Also, I assume that the German also I assume that Germany would start shrinking its inventory of coal, gas and biomass burners by the completion of the first 5 gigawatts of new nuclear capacity with 15% a year. This would have caused the Germans to close about 63% of their carbon burning capabilities by now. This would greatly enhance their carbon footprint and show the rest of the world how to effectively decarbonize your electricity system. If I break it down to cost, the nuclear expansion, if fully paid by the taxpayer, would have cost between 60 or 160 US dollars depending on which type of reactor the Germans would have chosen. The EPR would have probably pushed it towards the 200 billion US dollar price tag in the end, but the fact that the Germans would have been able to shut down 63% of coal, gas and biomass would be well worth it, especially when considered against the backdrop of declining health costs and fulfilling a promise to the people of the world to decarbonize. And this exercise is meant to show you that a truckload of money can make a difference, but you must spend your money wisely. And it is fair to conclude that the Germans have put their money on the wrong horse. In conclusion, the Germans have done nothing to warrant the adoration they get from the countless of environmentalists who don't look beyond the headlines. Instead, they have achieved the opposite. They've worsened the health of their own people and those of neighboring countries, and they also contributed needlessly to the ever-growing bubble of carbon emissions. France, on the other hand, seemed to be going in the wrong direction, with a new government hell-bent on deploying more renewables and possibly decommissioning their nuclear reactors. Luckily, President Macron has now clarified that this is not a viable way to go forward. The only thing we must do is consider the maps, consider the graphs and understand what they mean. If only all the countries willing and able to push the brake on carbon intense energy considered the great successes of countries like France, Korea and China and realized where these successes came from, we'd be well on the way in our quest to defeat the influence of high carbon energy sources such as coal, gas and oil. Also, simply consider the online electricity map and check all the green countries and figure out what they all have in common. More on this in my next video, where I will be showing you an amazing article written by Michael Schellenberg. And in subsequent videos, I want to delve into some questions regarding the levelized cost of electricity metric. Thank you for watching and Merry Christmas.